eighth grade to ninth grade. And uh, this, it is very hard to describe the tumult that existed in Detroit during those years in the late 1960s. Uh, the, the entire uh, social uh, structure of the city was in upheaval in all levels. Uh, as far as workers in the plants, um, women's rights, the anti-war movement. There was so much going on at the time. And uh, I am the daughter of not a factory worker, but of a very successful businessman. And my father was a record shop man, and he owned a record shop first on Hastings Street and then on 12th Street. And I was energized, however, because I had such an unusual view, being that I grew up in this idyllic Highland Park where we grew up, um, which was really the, the pillar of mi middle classes. But then I also had an entire life on Hastings Street, which was quite rough and tumble and uh, Southern black in its orientation, and then on 12th Street where my father's record shop moved. And my father came to suffer from alcoholism and he was a very severe alcoholic, and my family began to fall apart uh, internally. And because of that, I believe that the, the, the mores of the, uh, the pillars of the family had shifted. And so I was able to maneuver. You know, teenagers love to have a way to kind of get out of the embrace of the family, you know, uh, get out of the <coughs> strictures of family. And I was uh, very uh, overwhelmed by the troubles in my home. And General Baker and the men that were in the organization basically took me under their wing. And I always say I owe my life to them because I believe that the Lord led me to them. Because had I not been under the, the authority or the wing, I guess you would say, of General and of the, the, the men in the league, uh, I may have fallen prey to so much of the uh, drugs and the alcohol that became uh, flooded in our community during those years when I was having such turmoil in my home and in my own psyche because of the troubles in my home. And so therefore I was able to be around them a lot and hang out with them a lot. And they, uh, they you know, kind of acted as surrogate fathers to me and General was always a surrogate father to me. And that's why I have a very dearness around General that transcends any kind of organization. And I even lived with him and his first wife uh, for two years. I lived with them. And uh, when I was in one of my young uh, relationship squabble things with somebody, and they said, well, come on and live with us. And I lived with them for a couple of years. And so uh, I'm very grateful to him. And uh, I just wanted to say those things because uh, it's more sometimes than even just politics, you know. Uh, he was the epitome of kindness and of uh, generosity, and uh, and and I and I grew very much. Um, I did not uh, graduate from high school. One of the reasons why I went to go work in the plants, and when I went to go work in a plant at the age of 17, um, I went and I began organizing in that plant, and eventually I became a union president. And it is because of the example of these men that told me it was honorable to work. It was not shameful to only, uh, it was not shameful to not go to college. It was, it was an honorable thing to work and to be among union people. And I uh, learned a lot during those years. And one of the most particular things was, was that um, when I was a very young girl, 13 years old, 14 years old, the workers had drunk. Uh, they formed an organization. They were forming an organization called Drum in the in the plants in the Dodge plant. And Hamtramck is next door to Highland Park. It touches Highland Park. And because they were firing the guys at Dodge for any kind of activity, we young students uh, stepped up stepped up to help. And we said that we would pass out leaflets, and they asked us to pass them out. And so they would pick me up in the morning, General Baker and Chuck Wooten. And Chuck Wooten was my other surrogate father. And these men, um, they just, uh, they fathered me. And they picked me up in the morning, and uh, they're kind of unusual fathers, because most fathers don't have you out there passing out leaflets for you. But, uh, but and, uh, and, and my 
own father wasn't happy about it either. You better believe. You know, he, he came up to the office with a shotgun a couple of times. You know. But then after, but then, <laughs> but then after a while, even he kind of understood that these men meant me no harm at all, and they were keeping me out of a lot of trouble, and or the trouble of the type that he didn't want me to have. And um, and so I would go out in the mornings to Dodge, Maine, in the morning, and get in that truck and uh, drive over that hill over that hill into Hamtramck, and you would get to the top of the hill, and Chuck Wooten would say, Lynn, there's Dodge May. And it, he, it'd be so dramatic, he'd do it every time. <laughs> and he said, you can get anything you want down there. Because it was a city, it was a life, it was a whole city, it was unbelievable. And, and I just remember those early days of riding shotgun with them all the time. And uh, being around uh, him and men like Jerome Scott, who is here, uh, Mitchell, uh, who is here, uh, these were men of valor, men of valor, and uh, who greatly influenced my life. Waste